Hey everyone, Brandon from Brandon's Baseball Cards here. I have some really exciting news. I've decided to start a, a podcast devoted to the collecting of unopened material. And I have actually uh, already uh, made my first video. I'm posting a link uh, to the audio of that video in the description to this video. But what follows is the actual uh, video footage of me recording of my first podcast. So if you want to watch uh, and get the same uh, atmosphere as you do on the YouTube channel, uh, where you can actually see me while I talk, uh, all of the podcasts will be on uh, on my channel, but they will also be uh, linked uh, in the description to each video. And so I, I'll provide more information about this in the video that follows this one. Uh, hope you like it. I'm really excited about it. Keep collecting vintage baseball. Keep collecting vintage unopened baseball. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Collecting Vintage Unopened podcast. My name is Brandon Stewart, and this is a new podcast that I have um, that I'm starting that is focused specifically on a very niche area of the sports card hobby, and that is the collecting of vintage unopened packs wax boxes, um, cello packs, rack packs, which is really one of my fo uh, fo the focal points of my unopened collection. Anything and everything unopened, football, baseball, hockey, uh, non-sport, uh, any, anyone out there that's interested in the collecting of unopened packs, I hope you'll find this podcast to be uh, right up your alley and informative. Uh, I plan to talk a lot about the authentication of unopened material. Uh, the, I intend to talk to some of the leading experts on unopened packs, and I really want uh, to really uh, have this be an outlet for unopened collectors to chat about collecting unopened material and how they got into collecting unopened, and I, I really want this to be uh, um, an outlet for those of us that really enjoy this uh, section of the hobby. And... The schedule, you know, I intend to, this is strictly just for fun and to be informative. And so I'm not really sure yet if there will be a set schedule for the podcast. We'll kind of see what happens. You know, does it develop organically? Is there a schedule that develops? But I do know that I will be uh, interviewing uh, fellow uh, unopened collectors. I'll be in, uh, trying to interview experts in the field. Uh, in the authentication of Unopen, there's a lot that this podcast will bring that I think is new and original. And it's really just a, a, an outlet for those of us that love this area of the hobby. Uh, and so I'm really, really, really excited uh, that to be doing this, and thank you for listening. I, uh, for this first episode, I thought I'd get into a little bit about why I collect Unopen material. Right? Why, why is it that I actually, uh, why am I interested in this at all? It's such a niche area of the hobby. Why not just graded cards or something else? You know, one of the many other ways that people enjoy uh, uh, the collecting of, of sports cards. Uh, and it really started, like a lot of my collecting, it started with my grandfather. My grandfather uh, is uh, a wonderful, wonderful man named David Moody, who uh, is the person that really turned me on to collecting sports cards. Ever since I was a kid, we... We um, would would go to Walmart and we'd get cards. We'd check their st uh, for starting lineups. You know, when starting lineups were a big thing, um, and he's really the, the the person that the person that I really owe uh, where I'm at today in regards to the hobby too. I owe it all to him to my to my papa uh, as I call him. Uh, and when he has a, a card room at his house in Florida where I grew up, and there's a he when I was growing up he had this collection of vintage wax packs that he had gotten from someone in a, I guess either a trade or he bought a big collection out. I'm not really sure 100% of the backstory. But ultimately, uh, he uh, he had some really, really, really cool packs. He had a 1968 Topps wax pack. He had a 1971 Topps football wax pack. Uh, he had a 1961 Fleer football wax pack. He had some really cool stuff as well. He had some 80 stuff too, 84 Donruss but they were all wax packs. And I remember looking at them and being intrigued by the artwork on the front of the packs and also just being intrigued with the idea that these were packs that were meant to be opened. 
right? They were meant to be opened. And they, for whatever reason, they weren't, right? They, they stayed in their original state, the state they were in when you would go into a, a, you know, a, a candy store or whatever to buy them. And typically kids bought them for the gum, right? You bought the packs for the gum and the cards just happened to be in there, right? Uh, but ultimately that was really, and that, this was years ago now, you know, uh, that I really, really just became intrigued with unopened packs. And then what really led me into this area of the hobby in the last uh, three to four years, what, what really has led me to this area of the hobby is the fact that it's a very challenging way to collect vintage sports cards. So if I wanted to put together, let's say, just pick an example, a 1975 Topps complete set, okay, and X-Men are better, PSA, SGC, whatever grading company of, of choice uh, that, you, that there is. Um, if I wanted to do that, assuming I had the money to do so, and I wasn't that picky about the, the, the centering or, or something like that, Assuming you have the funds, that's that's fairly easy to do. There's a lot of 1975 Topps baseball cards in existence. They're just are. There are it's they're not hard to get a hold of, right? The number of actual unopened packs from such a year, sticking with the 1975 Topps example, compared to the number of cards that are out there in existence, is so so fewer. It's such a smaller amount of unopened or there's such a smaller amount of unopened product compared to the amount of actual physical cards that have been opened, right? Most of these cards were opened. So the fact that there, there are still survivors out there, if you will, uh, really, really uh, makes it, they're much rarer, right? It's a much rarer, uh, difficult to, to hunt down part of the hobby. And so it, you can collect years that would normally be not that challenging to collect, such as 1975 tops, 1976 tops, and so on, 1978 tops, whatever, you, you know, if you have the budget, you could go back even further, right, and try to get unopened material from the early 70s, late 60s, you know, uh, what have you. Uh, but it's a much more challenging way to collect cards, in my opinion. Now, not to say that collecting raw cards or graded cards isn't very challenging at times because it can be especially if you're chasing obscure cards or cards that don't really have a uh, um, you, you know a, a very a large population but with vintage unopened even even years where there, there's a lot of cards out there the number of unopened packs that are out there is is very very low compared to the number of cards that have been opened and that are out there in, in slabs and, and what have you and so to me, it's just, it's a, it's a challenging process and it, and it's really, can be really, really fun uh, because unlike, especially with what I do, uh, for those of you that don't follow my YouTube channel, my, uh, um, my YouTube channel, I, I talk a lot about the collecting of rack packs in particular, okay? Uh, I uh, love collecting rack packs because there's an added uh, scarcity component to it because you can have rack packs that have combinations of players that are very, very desirable. For example, if you get a rack pack that has two Hall of Famers showing on top, right? If you have a, a 1985 Topps rack pack, uh, let's say, that has Mark McGuire's rookie on top alongside uh, Roger Clemens' rookie, right, or something like this, because, because you could see the cards in rack packs, you could see the cards on the top and on the bottom of each cell, there's some really crazy combinations of things that could happen, right, and so it's just a, a, a crazy combination of players that are showing, uh, or, or which cards are showing on the back, what cards are showing on the front, it's just a whole new, it's just a very different way to collect cards from, from this time period, right. Uh, and it's a, to me, it's, it, it makes it even more rewarding because it is, it can be really challenging to build a collection of truly vintage unopened material, right? Especially if you're focusing on the 1970s and going further back. It's really tough. And there are a lot of uh, people in this hobby, some of whom I will talk to on this channel, that have spent years and years and years trying to accumulate vintage unopened 
product for either from a specific year or, or, or vintage on open product that shows a specific player. There are some people that collect uh, uh, Nolan Ryan packs, for example, packs just with Nolan Ryan showing. There's people that collect only uh, 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 spe uh, car uh, specific teams, if you will. So uh, if you're a Cardinals fan, you collect packs with Cardinals showing. If, if you're a Reds fan, such as myself, some, some people collect packs with Reds players showing or just Hall of Fame players showing, right? There's a lot of different uh, uh, subsections of this particular area of the hobby, but they all have one thing in common, and that's, uh, it, it's a, in my view, and I think a lot of uh, us in the unopened community would share this point, it's, it's a more challenging way to collect, uh, to collect sports cards, just because there aren't that many out there. There's not that many unopened boxes of 1970s baseball out there. There's not that many uh, um, unopened rack packs from cards from the 1970s. Even quite a bit of product from the 1980s is becoming scarce. Uh, so that's really uh, uh, why I, I find this to be such an intriguing and fun area of the hobby. And that's why I um, am looking forward to more episodes of this podcast. And I, I think this is going to be a, a unique podcast. And I think it's going to have a lot to offer those of us in the unopened community uh, that uh, maybe don't necessarily feel quite as represented by a lot of the other podcasts that are that are devoted to co the collecting of sports cards. So uh, that is what I have uh, for this first episode. Um, I will be back with more content soon. Again, I'd like to really thank you for uh, to, for listening. Uh, this is the Collecting Vintage Unopened podcast, and I'll be back soon. Take care.